Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. Welcome to this video on Microsoft Ignite 2021 Power Platform announcement. The first announcement was around PowerFX. Now Microsoft PowerFX is the low code language for expressing logic across the Microsoft Power Platform. And this language is the same language that is being leveraged currently by Power Apps and specifically the Canvas Apps. And this is heavily inspired from Excel. If you compare this language with Excel, there are a lot of similarities. This will be an open source, low code language for everyone, for makers and developers. Open source meaning making this language available for open contribution by the broader community on GitHub. Excel based, low code experience, so PowerFX doesn't just share the same syntax and functions like Excel, it also behaves in a very familiar way. It's declarative in nature, has formulas like Excel, and recalculates instantly just like the formulas recalculate in an Excel spreadsheet. And this is for everyone, for power users or citizen devs and pro devs. And how is this spanning across the entire development spectrum? Now, PowerFX is going to be delivered with the tools a professional expects, including the ability to directly edit apps in text editors like Visual Studio Code. Now, there was also an announcement prior to Ignite around a new tool that enables the source code of your Canvas app to be effectively managed in GitHub or Azure DevOps. You can differentiate the changes between files, do pull requests, comments. Basically, you can have multiple makers contributing at the same time. So what's the plan for PowerFX in future? Well, it's the low code language that is going to be deployed across the Power Platform. It's already available in Canvas apps. All Canvas apps makers, you are already familiar with PowerFX. This is not a new language. However, now this expression language, which is very Excel-like, will be extended to Microsoft Dataverse in calculated columns, for example, to begin with. Microsoft Power Automate. Imagine, today we have to use the Azure Logic Apps expression syntax. Imagine writing PowerFX in those expression editors. Microsoft Power Virtual Agents. Today, Power Virtual Agents does not have any base language. In order to extend Power Virtual Agents, we go ahead and interact with Power Automate. Basically, we call flows. However, the plan is for PowerFX to also be available within the Power Virtual Agent bot experience itself. There's also plans to move in into model-driven apps, AI Builder, and beyond. And that is the roadmap for PowerFX. So be on the lookout for all these improvements that are going to come over time. And PowerFX is going to be the language that's going to be consistent across the entire Power Platform. So here's an example of PowerFX in action. In Power Apps, I have a very simple label control here. And right here on the top, I have the property for text. And this FX that you see here now has a name and it's called PowerFX. Let's say I change this now to a function called concatenate, which is very similar to Excel. And I'm going to call this PowerFX. And just like that, the label has printed the text PowerFX. Now this language is declarative in nature. And just like Excel, it automatically recalculates things on the fly. So if I preview this app, here's a very simple example of a calculator. As I plug in my numbers, so 45 plus 50, and as I make changes to the numbers in the text boxes, immediately the formula calculates real time. Imagine writing expressions in flows using PowerFX. And imagine having that same expression language available while authoring bots in Power Virtual Agents as well. That's the unification of the language, which is PowerFX across the Power Platform. Microsoft Dataverse for Teams. Built-in low-code data platform for Microsoft Teams, included at no additional licensing cost, and supports up to 1 million records or 2 gigs storage capacity. Now, the new announcements around Microsoft Dataverse for Teams were, instead of being limited to the 500 environments per tenant, you can have up to 20 times more environments, 10,000 or more, basically, depending upon the number of M365 licenses you have. Also, if you hit the capacity for Dataverse for Teams, which is two gig per team, in that case, you now have the option to upgrade to the full Dataverse features, and this is now generally available. 
In Power BI, direct query support for Dataverse is also now GA. The next announcement was around Power Automate Desktop. And Power Automate Desktop basically enables robotic process automation capabilities in Power Automate. Power Automate Desktop will be available to Windows 10 users at no additional cost. It will be included in Windows Insider Preview builds as well in the coming weeks. Important to note that although Power Automate Desktop is going to be available for free at no additional cost, this is more like the attended version of Power Automate Desktop. You won't be able to call the desktop flows from cloud flows. For that, you will need the full license. Also, if you would like to run your automations in unattended mode, which is basically the best practice when deploying to enterprise grade scenarios, in that case, you would still need the full license. Another offer that was announced at Ignite is a limited time offer that is beginning April 1st, all the way through September 30th. The Power Automate per user plan with attended RPA will be available for just $15 per user per month. So for Power Automate Desktop, if you just head over to aka.ms slash get started hyphen pad, it will directly lead you to Power Automate Desktop where you can directly download Power Automate Desktop for free as long as you're a Windows 10 user. And once you have Power Automate Desktop downloaded, you can easily go ahead and start creating desktop flows. You can directly go ahead and start recording web actions or recording applications on my desktop or using the powerful set of actions that are available right here, all for free. In Power Virtual Agents, which is the low code chatbot experience in the Power Platform, the announcements were around artificial intelligence being plugged in to Power Virtual Agents. There will be a new AI powered topic overlap detection tool, which will help bot authors to identify and refine overlapping topics, reducing the need for the bot to ask clarifying questions. At the same time, a new topic suggestion feature powered by AI that generates topic suggestions based on chat transcripts. Very powerful. Many a times when the users are interacting with the bot, they may not get the answer depending upon what the bot was configured for. Now, through the power of AI, you as the bot maker will be provided with topic suggestions based on chat transcripts. Another announcement around Power Virtual Agents was the close integration of PVA with Microsoft Graph. From a governance standpoint in the Power Platform, we have new usage and analytics reporting for Power Apps and Power Automate. And this is a tenant-wide reporting in the Power Platform Admin Center, which will provide insights into the trends of active users and overall sessions. It will also help you gain visibility into monthly active user trends, as well as identify who are your net new users. You will also get reports on maker activity reporting and inventory reporting for Power Apps and Power Automate. So you can basically analyze trends and visualize the amount of apps and flows that are being created in your tenant. You can do this at a tenant level if you're the Power Platform admin or the tenant admin. You can also do this at an environment level in case you're an environment admin. Tenant isolation, which is basically ensuring that any inbound connections to your tenant from external tenants, as well as outbound connections are blocked for all Azure Active Directory based connectors. We also get new endpoint filtering options for connectors, which is extremely powerful. So you can configure specific endpoints to allow or block important connectors such as SQL, Dataverse, HTTP, and more. Around data loss prevention policies, now you can define your DLP policies at an action level for a connector as well. So for example, for the Twitter connector, we can go ahead and now block specific actions. For example, posting a tweet or retweeting. Those actions can be blocked and the other actions could be allowed. DLP URL filtering in case of custom connectors. Now you can also define an ordered list of host URLs, including patterns that you can define that are allowed at a tenant level. And the announcements around Power BI was around the Power BI premium per user license feature going into general availability, which is based on the new premium Gen 2 architecture, which provides improved performance. Also introduces a new order scale option with pay as you go features and improved utilization metrics. The Power BI premium per user license will become generally available on April 2nd at a price of $20 per user per month. 
So these were all the announcements around Microsoft Power Platform at Ignite 2021. Links to all the blog posts as well as highlighting some of the major sessions at Ignite. Check the description of this video and thank you so much for watching.